Hey everybody, I'm back to do Sun in Taurus. So let's go ahead and get started. Got my notes here. So if you watched the Sun in Aries video, then you kind of know a little bit about um, what I mean when I say Sun in a sign. So basically it's just describing to you in your natal chart, if your sun lands in a certain zodiac sign, these are some of the characteristics that this person may um, possess depending on other placements and whether this, you know, their son is more supported or um, challenged a little bit more or not being aspected at all, it could um, it could result in somebody identifying more or less with their sun sign. So if you ever know two, two Taurus and you're like, they act nothing alike, it's probably because one person's Taurus is more pronounced than the other person. The other person might be identifying more with other placements or other planets in their uh, natal chart. That's neither here nor there. We're just going to talk about the placement, right? So, Sun and Taurus. First of all, Taurus is a fixed sign. Whenever you have a fixed sign, it's more of um of a stable type of energy or at least a energy that does not like change so much. Um the four fixed signs in the zodiac are Taurus, its opposite Scorpio, Aquarius, and its opposite Leo. So if you kind of pay attention, these are four of the more determined signs. They like for things to kind of go their way. Um, and that can be positive or, you know, negative, depending on the situation and how it plays out. But wherever the sun lands in somebody's house, it explains kind of how they see themselves, how they put themselves out into the world. It describes a person's drive, a person's um, uh, motive, kind of, in life to do certain things. Um... And like I said, how a person sees themselves, uh, so how they see their strengths and their weaknesses is where a person might find their egotistical side. And, you know, wherever you have the ego, there's the shadow. So it's like, you know, what you think you're good at and then your flaws. Um, so, yeah, so when you have a sun coming together with a Taurus energy, it makes for a very fixed, stable person. They see themselves as stable. Taurus is an earth energy. They're grounded. Um, they believe in what they can see. They believe in the tangible. Taurus also represents, or uh, yeah, it represents the second house. So second house is where you would find your values, um, some of your self-esteem, your self-worth, um, your assets, your, your immediate possessions, um, your appreciation for things. So Taurus really is kind of like, it describes someone who is in touch with their five senses. They know what they like. Taurus people know what they like. And typically, they like things that are valuable, right? Second house, values. So you might find a Taurus person that, like, in their house, they have a lot of... Um, Taurus houses are either really comfortable, like, everything that you touch is, like, you just want to... You just want to... Like, there's a pillow, and it's just the fluffiest, softest pillow with the finest feathers and you just want to lay in it and just uh, enjoy and appreciate its qualities or you can't touch shit in their house or it's like really really messy because they're really lazy <laughs> so there's three options it's either really comfortable um and and just everything is put in in its rightful place and they know where everything is and they're crazy ocd so if you move something they know that it's been moved those are like the really particular that's more that fixed aspect showing up there or they can be the type of people where they just want expensive shit in their house and they don't want you to touch anything because everything costs so much money. And again, they know, they're know they like hoarders. So they might even be collectors of certain items, of luxury items, food items, anything that connects with the five senses. So it could be, um, you know, like my boyfriend, his dad's a tourist. He likes food. He has a collection of like herbs. He has an herb garden. He likes to tend to his garden. That's an earth sign type of thing. He likes to go out and put his hands in the dirt and watch his herbs grow. And then he'll bring them in. He knows how to, you know, keep them. And you know, you have to store certain shit a certain way. So everything has its own labeled place in the house and like whenever he wants something he knows exactly where to go to go get it if it's not there he's like where the hell is my shit um or they can be really really lazy i had i knew someone once uh, a tourist who was like everything in her house was mad comfortable she had like a throw blanket in every sitting area of the house because she never wanted to have to get up to go get a blanket no matter where she decided to sit um and it wasn't really like nasty messy but you can tell that like Taurus like to be comfortable so she just would have like little shit like a cup you know a couple cups left on the table because 
she was sitting there watching TV, drinking her coffee or whatever, and she didn't. She was too lazy to get up and go put it in the sink as soon as she was done, and then she forgot about it and she left it there. Or like socks all over the house because she doesn't like her feet to be cold, so she'll just leave socks everywhere so that she never has to get up for a pair. Like random shit like that. Um, Taurus also don't like to do dishes. I don't know what the fuck that's about. Check your mama. I don't know. I don't know. Um... <laughs> but also, like I said, Taurus always remind me of like the appreciation for the five senses or appreciation through the five senses. So those types of people, especially the women, can be very, very sensual beings. Um, Taurus might not necessarily always be the best looking, uh, you know, as far as like facial symmetry or like some of the things like a Libra might be. Um, but they have an a, a natural look like a lot of Taurus women look better without makeup like they just have a, a natural beauty to them that's very ethereal and it's very like you might not necessarily understand it but it's just earthy and natural and sensual and just the faces that they make light them up um but they don't need a lot of extra like enhancements and stuff like that or um like flashy adornments to make them look sexy and sensual think um who's the Taurus just think like, you know, red carpet, ball, you know, she wouldn't, a Taurus wouldn't be wearing like the flashiest thing. She'd be wearing like a, like one color flowy dress, like the Greek, like a Greek goddess or something like that. That's very Taurus type of um, energy, like adorned with leaves or some shit, something natural or something. I don't know. Um, and pleasure is their Achilles heel. Cause Taurus can also, like I, I mentioned Taurus maybe being a little bit lazy, um, because they just can appreciate relaxation. That's kind of one of the ways to appreciate the five senses. Um, food, they're they're prone to overindulging in food because of that. They just, like Janet Jackson is a Taurus where she exhibits both these qualities I'm getting ready to talk about. We all know Janet can blow up and, you know what I'm saying, weight-wise and be like, you know, out here big as hell one year. And then like 12 months later, she'll turn around and be back rock hard because Taurus have a crazy determination. Once they decide that they're done being lazy, they have willpower that's out of this world. Um, Janet is like a prime example because when she gets fit, she doesn't just lose weight. She doesn't just go on a diet program. Like she commits to the lifestyle and she'll bust out on your ass with a whole eight pack. She'll go from like 250 I don't know how many pounds you know everybody's different weight measures up different on people but she'll go from obese as hell to Hulk Hogan on your ass like not even Hulk like who's I don't know rock body uh, washboard abs on your ass and you'll be like how the hell did you do that so quick it's because they don't when they register in that work mode they are workhorses. They're like bulls. They're they're going for the jugular. They're going to go for the long haul. They're also good at committing to things long term. It just takes for them to actually, with any fixed sign, I'm an Aquarius. Aquarius is a fixed sign too. We can commit to things. People try to make it seem like we are um, just really stubborn, don't want to cooperate, whatever, blase, split. We will commit. We will cooperate. We will do it. We just have to make it up in our minds that that's what we want to do. And from that point, we become fixed in that nature. So if I go from being, oh, I'm a slob. No, I don't want to work out. No, I don't care. No, I want my Twinkies. Like, you're not going to convince me that I need to lose weight. The second that I actually say, you know what? I'm sick of being fat as hell. Like, I'm sick of feeling sluggish. I'm sick of doing this. I'm sick of doing that. I want to be fit. Boom. I'm going to go out and get a whole refrigerator full of nothing but healthy food. And I'm going to stick to it because that's what I decided to do. Like... And Taurus takes it to the next level because they're so, like, they're like bulldozers with whatever they do. They want to knock it out. They really want to get it done and achieve that goal and keep it going. Um, Let me see. I'm just checking my notes, checking my notes. I mentioned the fact that they are connected to the second house, so they do love possessions. Um, I think I said this, too, that they can be hoarders. That might have been taking it a little too far, but... I would say out of the Zodiac, if anybody was to be a hoarder, it would probably be Taurus. Um, but Taurus can also just be like, um, kind of take take a keen interest to one thing in particular. And usually it is something like, it'll either be like music, food, movies, entertainment is like a thing that they really like. Or something that holds some sort of sentimental value, there's that word again, or monetary value. So... Even like, 
I collect dolls. You know, they might be those types of people that collect the dolls and never take them out of the package. Or they collect video games and they've played every single game and you better not touch it and like they have all their games saved and it's like just a big deal to them. Something about Taurus, there's always like this one thing to them that's like a big deal and it has some sort of you know, emotional value almost to them to where they claim it as their possession. Even with relationships, people, partnerships. Um, if a person has a major sign, or not a major sign, but a major planet in Taurus, then they tend to be more on the um, possessive side of things. And it's not necessarily like a bad trait. It can, if it's, any trait can be negative or positive, depending on how you place it. So, you know, but at the end of the day, they do like to feel in possession of things. That's just a Taurus nature. If they don't have security, they don't want it, <laughs> and they don't see the value in it, like one or the other. Because um, they like to keep things close. It's something about tangible items. Like, if you're going to be here for me, prove it. Prove that you're going to be here for me. When I call you, show the fuck up. You know what I mean? And they, they're they like that in their friendships and their relationships, too. Like, if they say they're going to be here for somebody... And you call them, they're they're going to drop everything that they have on their plate and they're going to be there, point blank, period, no questions asked. The first one there, the first one throwing throwing bowls, and the, the last, you know what I'm saying, last one asking questions. Like, they're going to be beating your ass and asking questions at the same time because they're that, like, committed to the people that they commit to. Um, let me see. I noticed, again, too, I'll say this, too. Taurus sons like to throw their weight around. They like to feel valuable in social environments. Either they're complete homebodies and they don't want to go nowhere. And then the only reason they do go places is if they know someone or if they have a bunch of friends that are going to be there. And they know that they're not going to be like, I don't know. It's something about associations and being well known that Taurus really relish in. Like they... They like to feel important. I'll just say that much. They, If they can't have control over a room or at least control within where they want it, I don't know how to explain it to you guys, but it's like a real particular thing that I noticed that Taurus do. Like they want clout. I guess that's a good word. They want, they don't necessarily have to be in complete control of the room, but say for instance, if, if I'm a Taurus son and I'm going somewhere and I know my ex-boyfriend and his new girlfriend are going to be there i'm probably not going to show up unless i know that i have more friends in the room that will make me feel important and i kind of want to show that off to the little new girl because i need that level of verification that i'm the shit like taurus love to feel like they're the shit they love that shit like if not, they they may go probably not though because they don't ever want to feel vulnerable or without possessions like without a barrier without some sort of something to hold close like they don't really like the feeling of being left um you know what i'm saying left wide open kind of i guess you could say they don't like that they like stability they like to be sure you know what i'm saying they go places where they know they run shit like they're those types of people and they like to have a lot of really good resources as friends so that goes back again to the possessions thing they want to know that you know what i'm saying they have people of value and high standing in the world that they can call upon and be like hey i need your advice or i need your help with this and it's like a key player you know what i'm saying they don't really fuck with people that it's not really about shit because what's the point of that like you're not adding any value to my life um So the last one on the Aries one, I gave y'all kind of like a breakdown, a, a sentence that described the the planet that it's associated with, the house, and the element. So we already talked about it being an earth element, second house, and Venus actually rules over Taurus. So when you think about Venus, Venus is more of a, I mean, some astrologers might argue, but I see Venus as more of a feminine planet, um, and it's, it's about appreciation. It's about... Um, you know the value of something it's about the beauty and being able to appreciate the beauty in something or just um i think appreciation is enough said kind of like um because venus also rules over libra and libra is a real kind of like almost materialistic type of sign like they just really care about the way they look the way they present themselves you know um and that care comes from having a certain appreciation for something being put together well so you can kind of see how that one planet ties together taurus and libra even though libra is 
much different than Taurus. They hold a lot of the same type of core values. Like Taurus likes high quality shit. They just have a certain eye for things. Um, and knowing what's like the best of the best. Like if you're going for a good comforter set, take a Taurus with you. Because they'll be like, oh no, that's not a high enough thread count. No, you need the down pillows, honey. Not, not the little cotton joints from Walmart, baby. You need to go get like a memory foam mattress or something. They just always know what the, what the highest level of of whatever it is that you're looking for they know what to look for to make sure that it's the best you know um so i said the sentence that i made up was they appreciate venus the value second house of things earth earth energy always deals with it's not necessarily always like material things but just resources practical shit that you can use in the world to give yourself security and to help forward your agenda um, earth signs are very progressive people, all of them, um, Taurus, Virgo, uh, what's the other one, Capricorn, they're all, in my mind, pretty enterprising people because they, they're, they're forward moving in the way that they assess the situation and they can tell what you don't have or tell you what the value is of what it is that you do have in order to build build earth signs are all about building foundations um money kind of they understand that money they see it as a tool to help you build to get better to get bigger things to, you know what i'm saying to move to a better place in life or whatever like even virgo they're calculating as fuck they can um they they know the mechanics of a situation they can kind of they're kind of like mental geniuses they know what needs to be done in order to make something more efficient that's why some people say Virgos are uh, obsessed with perfection because they just always want to make the machine run bigger, better, faster, stronger. Capricorn, they look at it in a different way. They they look at it from more of a social construct. Okay, so they see you're standing in the world and they'll tell you what you need to do to get, to kind of manipulate the situation, to get in a better position, to make your your surroundings better for yourself. You feel me? So all of, it's kind of like a progression from Taurus to Virgo to Capricorn back to Taurus again. Um, cause then once Capricorn gets to that highest point, they just want to buy nice things and get a nice place to stay in and have a nice car and eat nice food. You know, that comes back to Taurus. So yeah, man, let me see if I have any distinctions between men and women. The men, I will say one thing, and I got a few Taurus male friends, so y'all don't be mad at me, but you know, it's true. The men are prone to giving into their pleasures. The women are sensual in that they like to give to other person to, to to another person to make the situation pleasurable for them. But they also like pleasures too. Like the Taurus women like to be spoiled. Do not get it twisted. She knows her worth. Do not get it twisted. If you do get it twisted, you can get the hell up out. Like she'll call you a Uber. Bye. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I don't have to mess with you. I got three other dudes on my line. You know that type of energy. But um, the men are are prone to giving into pleasure. So you know. Whatever their specific Achilles heel is, if it's eating, you can see a lot of Taurus men tend to get overweight. Um, if it's sex, Taurus can definitely be prone to being a sex addict because they have an appreciation for, you know, he might not have a type. He might just have, he might just like them to be of a certain caliber and, you know, become a womanizer from that and just like giving into the pleasures that, that is each individual woman. Or even I see a lot of them um, can be luscious. They like to drink. You know what I'm saying? They like liquor. They like the way it makes them feel. It puts them in a state of euphoria. And they feel um, just good, like, after that. I don't know a lot of angry Taurus drunks, even though I think anybody can become an angry drunk if they drink too much. But most of them do it, like, casually, like it's fucking nothing. Like, they're not getting drunk to celebrate. They're just celebrating getting drunk, <laughs> like, every day after work type shit. Um, but Taurus men can also be planners. If you can, if you know how to put the battery in their back, they are workers too. It's just you got to kind of know what to convince him to work for. Because at the end of the day, if you're like, babe, we, you know, we, you know, if you're trying to pressure your guy, like, let's move in together, you go get a job or a better job, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he doesn't want to do that, he's not going to fucking do that. But if you can convince him that it will add value to his life and that it's worth his time, to do that, if you can convince him, hey, you know those video games that you like so much? Or, you know, whatever his obsession is, you're like, you can buy six games a week if you go get this job. <laughs> like, it'll, it'll encourage him. Or you're like, we can get a, we can upgrade the house if you go, if you go, you know, work 
this many more hours a week or if you do this much overtime then he'll want to do it you have to make it worth his while though um and it's also because of their fixed nature especially for the men they tend to be a little bit more stubborn than the women it's harder for them to break certain habits so again, um, if, if there is a tourist man who's experiencing addiction or, you know, any of those kind of like uh, overindulgent qualities and he doesn't see a good reason to stop, he probably will not. He will make it a part of his lifestyle, whether it's drinking, whether it's drugs, whether it's overeating, whether it's watching too much TV, he will make that shit seem normal just to continue on doing what he's doing without feeling guilty. And it doesn't matter what you say until he's ready, he won't change. Um... And then with the women, I noticed that they tend to internalize a couple of those traits. So with them, they do tend to be uh, very sensual beings. Because of that, they can they know how to use their sensuality to kind of um, become a little bit of a siren for men. They kind of know exactly how to bait them, how to look a certain way, how to smell a certain way, how to uh, put themselves together in a way that seems effortless, but really it took them all night. Um, they're strong-willed too. So as opposed to being just stubborn for the sake of being stubborn like some of the men can be the women are just very hard-headed so if they have an idea you can try to convince her that it's not a good idea all you want but as long as she still comes to the conclusion that that's what she wants to do and she thinks she's smarter than you she'll do that like she's not gonna move from that and they can be very bull bullheaded like bulldozers and they can be brash to you almost like blunt in a way that's like how am I trying to put it? Like, they're not rude, but they can be loud. They can be rude. I'm not going to lie. They can be when they want to be. And they can be very matter-of-fact with your ass to the point where it's like, you don't even want to argue with this girl. Because even if she is wrong, she'll still argue with you like she's right. Because at the end of the day, you didn't change her mind. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, and they're fixed as well. So that goes along with that. And they also like to be appreciated. So with a tourist woman, you can't cut corners or at least not too much. Like she, she might be a chill tourist son. Um, but at the end of the day, like you might not need to buy her the most expensive thing in the parlor, but you need to put some thought into it. Like you need to show her that she matters and that she's actually appreciated with the gestures that you're making. Like, Maybe you can't afford to take her out for a five-star meal, but you know her favorite restaurant is Chipotle. You know what I'm saying? So blindfold her ass and take her to fucking Chipotle. She'll love that. She will feel like you really thought about her and it wasn't just something that you did to try to be flashy or to try to... You know, it's like not a, a one-size-fits-all type of thing. They want to feel appreciated for who they actually are. That shit will melt a tourist woman, a tourist son, woman's house, like her house. What the hell am I talking about? It will melt her heart. Um, so I think that that's all that I have for Taurus Sun for right now. I'm just putting these videos out here so y'all can kind of get a little glimpse into my mind and, and see how I, like, what my particular take is on each of the signs and everything. So I'm going to continue this series all the way down to Pisces. I'm going to try to get these videos out as quickly as I can. Um... And then always make sure to check the description box below if you want to, um, I was going to say a free reading. Child, I ain't doing no free readings. If you would like a reading from me, though, you can always contact me at my email. That's nell 4 vibe at gmail.com. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter. Like, leave some comments. You know what I'm saying? Follow me on Instagram. I'm active on all of those sites. I like to talk to you guys, um, you know, to see what type of stuff you want to you wanna see from me, what type of astrological information or, like, uh, tarot stuff do you want me to do on this channel I'll like consider it or whatever you know blase sweet so yeah I think that's everything I wanted to say so I'll see you guys in the next one I think I'm gonna try to knock out Gemini tonight too so make sure you like this video and subscribe bye